Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on casual cryptocurrency mining with 0% risk in a highly volatile market and is it worth it? Now, if you're new to this channel or a current subscriber, this is a little bit different than my normal videos and it's more of just a vlog series uh, to uh, let you know how I got into Bitcoin and then give, give you some tangible numbers on if it's profitable or not. Um, in general, when you look up YouTube videos, they fall into one of three categories, and rightfully so. Um, and most people are probably not going to get into cryptocurrency the way that I'm doing it. Um, so when I'm in such a low percentile, I like to think of it as I'm in the top 100%. But even if you don't want to do the 0% risk method that I'm doing, um, at a minimum, just want to give you some ideas and things that I've learned along the way. and what to expect because in some ways it ex exceeded my expectations and in other ways uh, it went in a bunch of different directions I had no idea was possible so and when I do vlog styles I can tend to get chatty and you know I don't want to totally put you to sleep so I made myself a little bullet point list here to try to keep myself um, organized and not talk you to death um, so I'll First start off with how I got into Bitcoin because it's probably different than what most people are. And then um, at the end wrap up with my current 0% risk journey and um, where I'm at with that and how sustainable we will see. And then along the way I, I'm, I broke it into three categories. Number one is the mining pools and hardware setup that I use and kind of show you the progression of that and um, I'll have links in the description of um, you know timelines and uh, different things I ended up purchasing then go over some of the things that you can do because uh, that's one of the things you know it's like okay I have Bitcoin um, you know what can you do with it so I'll show you some of the things that I've been able to do with that and in part for example so like this for example how I went from a, just using my standard PC to a full-on rig like this without investing hardly any money and then how to tell um, if you're making a profit, some of the things that I did um, before I had tangible metrics and things like that. And then just a summary. And so it's really up to you on what direction you wanna to do with it. But you know, as I stated, my, my method's kind of a one-off, but more than likely you'll find uh, yourself in one of three categories and rightfully so, that's what the majority of YouTube videos are on cryptocurrency. Number one are the investors. Uh, people that either invest long term or look for the most profitable and try to sell. I've done some research on that and you know learned some of the candlestick technology and learn about the triangles and different uh, techniques. But uh, even when you get that down, then you have to deal with market manipulation. And when I search the interwebs and YouTube on market manipulation, I get mind blowing things like this. Now anybody who for one minute argues against manipulation really simply needs to replay yesterday where markets were making new highs on a lower volume. Sit back for a minute. If I could get a, a stick and put Velcro on my forehead and a camera on top of the stick, and if I didn't make the camera, I sure don't make the stick, I didn't make the Velcro, but I'm worth $100 a share. Something is really wrong. Now trust me, I have done my due diligence, but those concepts just don't stick. Then you have the hardcore miners where they have multiple rigs and invest thousands of dollars and get into debt to try to make up their losses over time. But with a volatile market, that's kind of risky. And then again, going back to my situation with not really having money to invest into it, just like with the stocks, that makes it a, a tough sell. And then finally, the anarchist, not necessarily in a bad way, but just people that are against centralized authority for banking or government, things like that, and just um, have problems with their local currency, uh, fiat currency, and need an alternate way to purchase things or avoid taxes. <laughs> I mean, th th there's good and bad things. But uh, with that, but that was another thing. I, 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 want to, I want to be legit as possible. And another thing is I also didn't want to have my normal bank account associated with anything with Bitcoin. And I made some exceptions to that, which I'll get into later. So how did I get into Bitcoin? 
Well, first, let me just say I am not a risk taker by any means. I don't invest in stock. Um, anything with cryptocurrencies, they say if you invest as much as you have, or they say don't invest more money than you can afford to lose. And so for me, that's pretty much nothing. Um, I single family income and I have to support my wife and son. They rely on my income. So if I was single, I would be more, um, probably a little more risky, but uh, my family's mo first and foremost. So I do not do any high risk uh, investments. There is someone that I know and about four years ago, they wanted me to invest in um, Iraqi dinar for um, foreign exchange currencies, which I didn't do. And at the time they won like $1,200 and I make millions in Iraqi dinar, I guess. But came across that person a few months ago and was like, hey, how's the dinar, dinar business? And uh, then they were, they were saying it was great. I haven't fact checked that. Uh, but then they told me I should um, invest in Bitcoin, and if I could come up with $350, I could be making millions of dollars every week with Bitcoin. Hmm. And at the same time, a friend of mine was actually who's starting up his own business was actually get he used to um, do cryptocurrency mining. He was getting back into it like hardcore, buying like 13 GPUs and 20 ASIC miners and all kinds of stuff. And since he had experience with it, I mentioned it to him like, hey, my wants me to invest $350. And then I was thinking, well, if you can show me how to mine, maybe I can mine $350. And then I could say, hey, I made $350 with equipment I already had. I didn't have to invest a dime. And so really that was my intro to uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Now, fortunately, uh, the buddy of mine, he actually ended up setting me an account with miningpoolhub.com and set up a worker, and then it, it just came to a point of, he said, all right, download a wallet, which I use Electrum. Uh, because if he hadn't have done that, it probably would have been one of those things where you say, oh, that'd be cool if you do it, but if you don't actually schedule anything, um, it wouldn't happen. So, but since he had it all set up for me, I mean, all I had to do was, you know, download a miner. So let me show you what I first did. All right, so I have miningpoolhub.com opened up here. And as you can see on the quick start guide, they have use mining helper programs. And this is for GPU and CPU mining. And I started with the multi-pool miner uh, by Aaron Sace. And essentially what that is, is it is a program that runs a PowerShell script on Windows and we'll check to see which algorithm is currently the most profitable and we'll automatically switch between them and mine the different coins. And then I have it set to, if you go to the auto switches, I mean, auto exchange, you can see it's set to auto exchange to Bitcoin and you can turn it off if you want because um, each coin you can create your own wallet. Um, but you know, Bitcoin was really all I was interested in. So I just had it mine bunch of different currencies and then convert it to Bitcoin and that gets sent to your Electrum wallet. Now originally I was going to call this video um, casual crypto mining for gamers because I have uh, three gaming machines and I started mining with those three. And I'll show you some pictures here. So like this one that I showed earlier when I first started I basically had a, a EVGA uh, Titan I had an EVGA GTX 1080 SC and a Titan XP um, on one machine and I would run uh, the multi-pool miner on that pro on that machine and then I busted out this old um, i7 second generation with a GTX 980 in there which the push fan style ran really hot and at the time I didn't know about um, MSI Afterburner um, as you can see here. Uh, because with this you can adjust voltage and fan speeds to keep the temperatures down but at the time uh, I didn't have it so or I wasn't aware of it so um, it was just running really hot and so I had to keep the site off and, and put a fan on there. Now I also then had this um, slimline ASUS case with a GTA, uh, EVGA uh, 1070 SC and this originally came with a 760 uh, GTX 760 and um, the power was it was underpowered so it was only running like 80% power so it was running cool enough in the case itself 
So those were the three machines that I had mining um, the very end of May, very beginning of June. All right, so I'm going to bring up my old wallet here uh, just to kind of give you some samples. And originally when I recorded this video back in July, I thought it would be I would just go through and go through each transaction. But I end up jumping all over the place as far as categories. So um, I'm going to try to summarize this um, just to kind of give you an idea on flow here um, when I first started. So you can see here my very first track transaction ended up being from the mining pool hub 4.02. Uh, Bitcoin and that was the threshold I set so basically you can if you go to uh, your Bitcoin and wallet automatic threshold uh, 0 0.021 so as the uh, coins accumulate uh, and get converted to Bitcoin once you reach 0 0.02 then it will transfer to me well as I stated the my friend that set this up for me when he set it up for me and I uh, created the um, Electrum wallet uh, and I sent him an, one of my addresses he sent me at the time about five dollars worth of Bitcoin this point zero zero two three five but notice that that came a day after a week of mining well as you probably know by now there was um, a hard fork and a soft fork with the SegWit activation and um, one of the main issues with Bitcoin was how long transactions were taking and how much it costs uh, to get those processed by the miners, the transactions processed by the miners. So when he sent me this $5 uh, worth of Bitcoin, he had used a low fee. So it literally took seven days for that to actually show up as confirmed in my Bitcoin wallet. So if he had paid a higher fee, it would have been faster. Uh, but that, you know, again, is a uh, firsthand my firsthand experience of what this, uh, you know, debates were on how to address that in the Bitcoin network community. So then you can see here, um, just using those three devices, for the most part, I was getting approximately 0.02 every two and a half to three days. Now, over time, it wasn't very economical to have multiple machines running and because when you're mining, it's using the CPU at 100%, so you can't really use uh, CPU or GPU, whatever you're using. In my case, I forgot to mention, I was using both CPU and GPU mining. So initially, what I did from a proof of concept standpoint was look into mining rigs. What did it take to build one? And one of the YouTubers I tend from, if you want technical, um, content and real-time interaction. Uh, the YouTuber Bits Be Trippin'. Um, I tend to go to that site or his channel quite a bit uh, to watch his live streams uh, for building, but then also sometimes if I have questions, he answers questions. So um, he, from a tech standpoint uh, with the mining rigs, he's kind of my uh, go-to. And um, so I started, I did, I bought some uh, some PCIe risers and I think I paid about thirty dollars somewhere between thirty to fifty for a pack and um, and actually at first no I think I spent like five bucks because I just bought one and as you can see in this picture this is kind of the proof of concept just to see if it would work where I have a a GPU sitting outside I just had it sitting on a piece of wood balancing it wasn't secure by any means but it was at least from a proof of concept cool I'm able to mine um, so I can get multiple GPUs, but the issue was I also needed a, po a bigger power supply to support multiple GPUs and One thing I do have is servers with redundant power, which I don't use the redundant power And so I found it uh, for about $20. I was able to get some PCIe uh, or um, some power breakout boards and here's an example of what that looked like where as you can see um, I've got the power supply here that is providing power to uh, the GPUs and I'm not having to use the um, onboard power supply because it wasn't sufficient for both of these. And again, this is another angle, so I had the box fan blowing on it and that was kind of uh, the start of what ultimately became a rig. So then as time went on, then I thought it would be good to make uh, 
I wanted to make like a portable GPU um, where if I have a different PC, I could just bring this block of GPUs over and hook them up and call it a day at first. So then, as you can see here, this is was one um, prototype. I put the fire extinguisher in there as a joke initially, <laughs> but this is one tip. If you are using the, because each of these PCIe risers are powered by a six pin to SATA adapter. Well, on my power supply, on one chain, there were three SATA power supplies. So I just hooked all three of them up. Well, if you do that, you may cause an electrical fire. <laughs> so the, the actual PCIe boards, the GPUs pull quite a bit of power on there. And I've later read that you shouldn't have more than two. Um, now I don't have more than one. Uh, but yeah, so I'll, I, it could have been nasty, but fortunately it just melted the wires and didn't actually catch fire. So don't uh, put more than two <laughs> and that's why. And I guess one thing I forgot to mention is the reason I was bringing them out of the case was, as you can see here, uh, they were running pretty hot, especially with the push blower style fans. So we got 129.5 Fahrenheit. And then even with this setup, it was still running a bit hot at 115 with the just a box fan, but it was still better. Now, if you already have um, like EVGA 1600 G2, I see a lot of people use. If you already have those massive CPU-based power supplies, um, or I should say PC-based power supplies, um, go for it. Um, it's just I didn't have those, and I just ha happened to have more servers, and so the breakout board for the server power was um, the most economical for me because I could spend you know, 20 bucks and use my existing power supplies as opposed to spending two, $300 for a whole new power unit. So when all is said and done, this is basically what it looks like now where I have uh, two uh, GTX 1080 Ti's, a GTX 1080, and the two GTX 1070's that I had in um, my other machines. But I didn't have some of these cards, and which brings into some of the things that you can do. Purchasing Bitcoin with US dollars is not an option for me. It's, and it's not something that I want to risk, but is there a way to buy Bitcoin an alternate way? And it turns out there is. And that is through purse.io, which I just brought up. And as you can see here on this transaction, you can see there's 0 0.02 and at 0 0.04. This is technically Bitcoin that I purchased, but uh, not in the traditional sense. So purse.io is essentially escrow. So if eBay and Amazon were to have a baby, now you have purse.io. And the concept is pretty simple. People want to buy stuff. So you can go check out um, you know, what people want to buy and it will show you, it's usually an inflated rate. So right now, let's see, Bitcoin is at what, 45.60? So they might have, um, well, let's just go look. So now that I'm logged in here, if you go to earn, yeah, see, well, they actually have it inflated even higher because they get a certain percentage. So basically at this point, um, you can change it to filter by your country. I'm in the United States. So here's all the different things that people want to buy. Um, and I can purchase these and in return, this is how much Bitcoin I would get. So if uh, I click on this order, for example, I don't want to accept the offer because I don't know what it is yet, but um, basically it's saying I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to buy somebody $105.90, whatever their order is, it's $105.95. I'll pay for that with my credit card. I have Amazon Prime, so I just pay for that as normal. And it's sent to the user um, as a gift address, so you see their name and what city and state they're in, but you don't actually get their address. Once that gets delivered, then they rate me. They give me a you know one to five star rating and confirm that they had um, received it. And then once that's done, then the purse.io or the escrow will release the Bitcoin to me. And vice versa, I can buy items with Bitcoin. So as you can see here, I'm on Amazon.com, and I copy the link of the item that I want and I paste it in here. And it shows up, available fast shipping. I add it to the cart. 
proceed to checkout. I mean, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It verifies your shipping address. I have it blocked out here. Uh, but then it gives you the payment or, or the option to pay with Bitcoin. In this case, I open with my Electrum wallet. Um, as you can see, the Bitcoin at the time was worth 25.10, and this was my first transaction. So I I put the fee, I kept the fee a little bit higher just because I, the first time there was a low fee, it was uh, it took seven days, so I wanted it sooner. So then you just confirm the amount that you're uh, going to purchase. And then there you go, thanks for your order. And then it took about um, a day or so, and then I received the, the product just as normal. So it was delivered to me from Amazon as a gift receipt, so you couldn't return it for cash, but you could get store credit or exchanges still. Um, so that I thought was kind of cool. And like I showed you then, um, well I showed you when I did it the other way around where I purchased someone else's but you can see here, I've got it marked here, the Xbox One Charge Station via Purse.io. You can label these whatever you want. So that was uh, what I just showed you um, in my wallet. That was that transaction there. Now, if you have a shared Amazon account like I do with my wife, you may want to give them a heads up what you're doing. Only because, as you can see here, one of the things that I bought for somebody else was this urn. <laughs> And so when my wife was looking at the orders, she was like, um, why did you spend $125 on an urn? No one that we know have, have passed. So, uh, And then I didn't explain it properly. She thought that I had to buy the urn in order to get Bitcoin. But then I was like, no, I, I bought it for somebody else as a gift. And then once they receive it, then I get the Bitcoin. But yeah, so just uh, from firsthand experience, you just may want to, and depending what you're buying, just to save some explanation, you may want to let your significant other know what's going on. Now we'll come back to some of these, but this one right here, this was my first big direct Bitcoin purchase. Um, it was around close to $800 at the time. And this is where I actually use Newegg. So as you can see here, I went to Newegg. I thought I would upgrade, add another GPU uh, since I've been making money. Um, and so why not let's see what we can do here so just as normal I add it to my cart and scroll down to secure checkout and as you can see by default I had my American Express card in there but I edit payment and switch it to Bitcoin how cool is that so I click on the continue order and review, verifies your shipping information, check your agreement, and then Bitcoin checkout. And just like with Purse.io, it gives you an option, um, gives you the QR code if you want to use your phone. But in my case, I just opened on my local wallet. And here it's confirming that you're going to send $789 worth of Bitcoin. Hit OK. Kept the fee low this time. And you can see that the order was confirmed. And then it took about three days to get the payment confirmation. Um, and then within a few days from there, I received the GPU and I'm mining with it now. So. And that's another thing is like if something happens with Bitcoin at this point, you know, it's I've already got some things to show for it and I didn't have to spend any money, more or less. I'll get to that in a minute. Now I'm a, I have a couple of games, um, but one of the things that uh, I thought was cool, and I, I don't know why, apparently this came out last year, I don't know how I missed it. But for example, um, I buy a number of games on uh, Steam most of my games on Steve and if I say purchase for myself I don't know how I missed this before but look they actually have a Bitcoin option on there and I can actually choose Bitcoin as a form of payment so the next game I buy on there I am going to do that um, so I just thought that was really cool 
Uh, I don't have screenshots of it because I haven't done it yet, but um, I'm sure it would be just like the Bitcoin. Then you have the exchanges themselves. So for example, right now I am mining Zcash and what will happen, what I'll do is, um, since I'm focused more on Bitcoin, uh, if I go over to my slush pool, so right now, let's see, I've got 0.48, um, some pending. Once the, um, once, see, I think I have the, so, yeah, right here, payout threshold. So once this gets to 1.1 Bitcoin, that gets transferred over here to Poloniex. And then from here, I can self um, get 0 0.05 BTC, essentially, um, and trade it. And there's, like I say, <laughs> there's uh, a lot of different ways you can do this, but I just pretty much keep it simple. Um, either have it auto do it, auto exchange while I'm on uh, the mining pool hub, or some of them I'll exchange myself, or just hold on to. I have a number of alt currency wallets just for, uh, just in case. Like Monero, I had some Monero and then that's jump, I think it was, it was like less than 30 bucks and within a few months it's already over 100 it's like um so, so you never know and the only other thing before i get to the um how to tell if you're making a profit or not is i did exchange some little bit of bitcoin to steam it's basically like a social media type thing where you can post things and if people like it you get money or steam it <laughs> um and at the time, I don't know how it is today, but it took like three days. Um, you have to request access to it, and then they send you an email to verify it. But it took me like three days. So um, you can see here, I just reposted some of my YouTube videos just to see what hits. It looks like the gaming ones are more popular on here. But 4630, I don't really know what that means because if you look at my wallet, you know, estimated value $33. This 233 is that transaction from block trade but then it's you know i don't exactly know how to use it so and unfortunately because i've been so busy uh, i haven't really had time but that's the cool thing is once you you know i originally started as you know just trying to make 350 dollars in bitcoin and then you find all these other avenues and things you can do so it's 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 pretty fun I, i'm enjoying it even though i don't totally understand it all but now to get into how to tell if you're actually making any money. Now, initially, when I first started this venture, I created this spreadsheet um, where I would check the balances throughout the day. Because like I say, the auto exchange will convert to Bitcoin in batch intervals throughout the day. So what I would do is just you know, see how much Bitcoin I had um, from the alt currencies that were being converted throughout the day. And then see when it was actually deposited to try to get an idea about when I would expect 0 0.02. Um, and you can kind of see how it grows throughout the day. This was through June. Um, and then it got to a point where it was pretty much every, every other day, um, adding that GPU and things. And I was comparing it with nice hash. And then I had, for all the CPUs, I would have, you know, check check that because sometimes you have to um, restart like it will crash or yet whatever and you have to restart it and keep in mind um, I also learned about overclocking so I started overclocking some of the cards and watching the temperatures um, so as you learn more about it and get more into it you can be more efficient so so far all was good but then uh, this happened got a little bit of a eye-opener <laughs> Uh, so you can see from May, my electric bill was 179. Um, but June was 256. That was more likely from AC. But then look at July when I after I've been doing the mining. Now it was 538 dollars and 97 cents. So at this point, I've been able to you know buy some graphics cards and some, you know, like the Xbox controllers and things like that, but still need cash to actually pay my bill. So that was kind of a eye opener and they do have calculators and things out there, but, um, I, and I knew to watch the electricity. I just, um, in the excitement kind of overlooked it and just started buying stuff, you know, just to play around with it. And, uh, then it's like, Oh, Hmm. 
Yeah. Gotta watch that. So, one of the things I did was buy a voltage meter. Um, this is actually, let's see. And again, I'll have all, all the stuff that I've added or purchased um, in the description. But this I bought because now this doesn't include AC usage because uh, AC was used a little bit more than usual. And then also I have fans running. Um, and I even purchased a, um, since it gets cooler at night, I don't need it as much now, but I bought to, to try to reduce the AC bill is, um, or usage, is I purchased a um, evaporative cooler or swamp cooler. It was about a hundred bucks. Um, just a small one that you put water and ice and then it just evaporates and blows a cold air opposed to just blowing around warm air, um, which helped. But so those, the fans and things like that aren't counted, but just the two CPUs, the, the primary uh, PC CPU and the server CPU with the breakout board I have plugged into here so I can show currently um, at 1307 um, watts I mean it fluctuates it's usually in the 1200s but um, this is showing hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents so far based on my 13 cents per kilowatt hour because you can see here uh, for the past 27 days and 19 hours and 24 minutes it's used 850.3 kilowatt hours and uh, so that's where this um, 110 uh, 50 comes from so that way when I get my electric bill every month I reset this every month and so that way I can say at a minimum not including you know the AC or fans that's how much um, it's costing me to run my GPU setup and then I can compare that with how much I'm actually making in Bitcoin to make sure I'm still making a profit now Initially, I didn't want any association. I, I didn't want to do any USD conversions, but you know I can't afford hundreds of dollars every month um, on electricity. So what I ended up doing is getting a BitPay card to cover the electricity. So as you can see here, I put a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin on, and then paid my. This is my second electric bill. It was a little bit less, five twenty three forty two. Um, but I think that also includes the transaction fee. So I paid that and then um, added 500 more dollars. Um, so my idea, and this is where people um, probably, where I'm probably in the minority with this, but instead of just paying my cost of running it, I, I'll pay my whole electric bill for the whole house, including AC and things non-mining related. Um, so then as long as I'm mining enough cryptocurrency to cover my expense, then I know it's profitable. Sure, I'm not saving as much as I could be, but as far as the 0% risk, I'm saving technically, you know, a few hundred dollars in fiat currency a month because I'm paying off my electrical bill. And then if it comes to the point where it's breaks even or in the negative, then I know just unplug it it's, it's not no longer profitable so and then just to uh you know because during that time there was a, a bitcoin hard fork and i end up opening other wallets because for security and everything else um basically i took all my bitcoin cash and converted it uh, back to bitcoin and i had to open up a exodus wallet temporarily to send my bitcoin and then to send it back to my to send from my old wallet to but yeah, I won't bore you with all that, but basically, so that's kind of what these um, transactions were shuffling with the um, Bitcoin Cash situation. And then you can see here that um, I, uh, th this is where I load the, I spent, you know, 0.23 and 0.125 uh, Bitcoin to BitPay to keep this balance up so I can pay my bill um, every month. That's kind of the game plan going forward that I have. So, um, like I say, if everything crashes right now and it becomes worth nothing, I'm not out any money. Um, it's been a fun experience. I have some nice gaming cards uh, to play with. And if you're considering ASIC mining, um, I borrowed some from a buddy of mine uh, that I'm running. Um, in this example, I'm running on Slush Pool. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, 
I mean, you're just going to be spending thousands of dollars a piece, more than likely, um, on those. And <laughs> my electric, so it's going to cost you about, um, for each unit, it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be between eleven to thirteen hundred per unit, depending if you're going with Avalon or Bitmain. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I, I tried testing. You know, I am testing with those too, just to see what my return on investment is. And it's uh, um, you can see here. You know, I, I've been trying. You know, playing around with different hash rates, and because uh, since uh, a uh, buddy of mine that's you know bought 20 of them he's let me borrow some but i don't even let these run that long because it's over you know between say 150 to 200 dollars extra a month with my one gpu unit well it would cost me that per device and i've got multiple device uh, asic devices running which is going to double triple quadruple that electrical bill and you know you can even see here i think this is with four Let's see, so three dollars and fifty seven cents per block at that rate. This one at uh, what eighty tera hashes that's thirteen dollars, but still, I mean, you have to have really low electricity or um, have a really good pool you know I, I try I switch between different pools just to play around with both with ASICs uh, for SHA-256 ASICs and um, altcoins but at the end of the day um, just my little um, switch in between a uh, slush pool and um, mining pool hub is usually enough for now uh, to to cover the electricity and then have a little bit left over now with that said it's taken me about four days to make 0.02 because the, so many people are jumping into this the pools hash rate is going up exponentially and so I'm what I made with just a few graphics cards initially now I'm running five um, I'm making less it's taken me twice as long to make the same amount I was making in June with a couple cards. So that's another thing you can keep in mind. As more and more people get involved with this, um, you're gonna have to keep upgrading your hardware in order to be um, sustainable from a profit. That's why I don't, I'm not comfortable with getting into debt, buying a bunch of graphics cards and mining cards off front, up front because you never know um, what can happen. If you have the money to make that risk, I mean, that's, uh, good on you but like I say for me personally I wanted to do this in a risk-free environment and you know just play around with it and as long as I'm not losing money you know have fun with it so that's where I'm at now and um, thought I'd just you know share with you some of this this experience here so in summary and final thoughts uh, again some of the other youtubers that i uh, watch are bits be trippin for the technical on building your own rigs and answering technical questions um, box mining for daily news on what's going on and other i mean there's a lot of good channels out there but just a couple other worthy mentions is the world crypto network uh, they usually have some pretty good live streams uh, informative live streams um, and if you um, like kind of more of the quirky kind of goofy style, um, I would equate it to Jack Septicai for the gaming community. Uh, Digital Gold is kind of the uh, mining community version of that, or it's kind of more over the top. Uh, whenever they think something or a market's going to crash or something, they wear space suits with helmets and uh, get have a lot of energy um, and so if you subscribe they get all excited so if you're into that um, so there's still some informative stuff on there but it's it's kind of more of a, like I say a little bit more on the quirky side and again you probably won't find videos that are doing specifically what I'm doing from a zero risk val um, point if there are you know let me know I'd definitely be interested to see that um, but you're going to see the investor sp slash speculator type with the miners and uh, the anarchists uh, in general. They'll usually fit in 
one or all of those uh, categories. And you know, so far from the pros, I see that it's a it can be a slow passive income. You know, if you're not trying to, it, when you're in a position like me, again, this is for not having the money to invest. Um, it's as of now, um, August end of August 2017. Um, it can be a slow passive income. Uh, you may not make a lot, but it can. Uh, potentially cover some bills and it depends on what equipment you have and remember to weigh out the um, the cost and how long it might take you if you if you're going to get in debt to start mining for some of you maybe better if you have just extra hundred bucks to throw it into bitcoin and hope it goes up opposed to you know building you know getting in debt building a rig and then mining and not be able to uh, keep up uh, there's more worldwide adaption to it. I mean, I showed you a few examples, but there's a lot of places you can use it over the counter even. And so Bitcoin is starting to become more um, standard in some ways. So that, so there's tangible use cases for it. And again, when it comes to you know mining, you know check the pools, see what uh, the rates are. I know for beginners, a lot of times they talk about using nice hash, which I have done. Um, but the thing to keep in mind with that is just that um, the backend hardware, like if you're mining Ethereum or Zcash, the, the programs you're using, they have their developer fees built into it, and usually it's around 2%. So as you're mining, just keep in mind that, you know, 2% is going to the developers of the software that's being used, but then NiceHash takes about uh, 4%, um, I think 4 or 5% on top of that if you're extracting or have your payout to an external wallet. So you could be paying, you know, six or seven percent off your potential profits uh, to make it less profitable. The only upside is with the pay per share method that they have is it's based on what people are willing to pay. So if you get people willing to pay more, it's potential you could make more than mining some of the um, altcoins directly. But lately, I found it's more profitable just mining the altcoins directly. And of course, the blockchain technology itself. If you are a techie, um, learning about blockchain is really cool. And the evolving technologies beyond just the currency, like virtual contracts and different use cases for it. And it's, it's just uh, really interesting uh, to read and learn about. And again, with the cons, again, it's a high-risk market. I don't remember what it was earlier in this video but as of right now it's uh, four thousand five hundred ninety eight dollars and sixty two cents for bitcoin uh, currently so um that could keep going up it could go down uh you just never know so again use uh any type of investing at your own risk in a highly volatile market when you're mining with your gpus you want to watch the temperatures because it's going to put a full load of stress and it's going to um, take away your lifetime of the card so if you only have one graphics card maybe you only want to mine you know at night and not have it run 24 7 just because if you burn out your card you know then you're out money <laughs> But if you're if you're patient, it's possible you could just mine and you know whether it takes six months, a year, or however long, uh, you may be able to buy you know the current generation uh, graphics card and uh, for free essentially. But if you can't risk losing your cards, then obviously take that into consideration. And you have to be aware of the so in addition just to the f market fluctuation, also the difficulty when it comes to mining because so many people, uh, I guess they call it a gold rush where everyone is you know rushing to do this mining. Well, then the difficulty and uh, frequency of how often you mine coins is less and your payout uh, distribution in the pools is less. So like I say, in, when I first started at the end of May, beginning of June, I was at 0.02 Bitcoin every other day at one point, but now it's taken me four days with five cards uh, to make the same amount. So it's still profitable for me, but I can see if the trend keeps going that way, if I don't keep upgrading, then it's not going to be profitable. And I don't plan on doing that um, if it gets to that point. I'm just uh, sticking with the you know few months of free electricity, if that's all it is and um, hang on to whatever is left over. Which brings me to the next con, which was the electrical cost. And as you saw, my electrical bill went up substantially. And 
if you're just mining and not converting it to US dollars, then you know, you got to make sure you have that money to cover the extra monthly cost for that. And on that topic, which I forgot to mention, is you want to keep up with your local tax and regulations and verify if what you, whatever you're doing is considered a security or a currency. What I'm doing right now, uh, and I'm in the United States, since I'm mining it, it's considered um, an earned income. So what's going to happen at the end of the year, whatever I deposit onto BitPay, whether I use it or not. So I think right now, you know, I had essentially, what, 1500 um, I put on there. So at the end of the year, they, they don't report to the IRS or anything. So I'm not going to get a 1099 form. So that means I'm going to have to print out those transactions to report it on my taxes. And then they'll probably take 40, 50 percent off in taxes that I'll have to pay at the end of the year because it's like a earned income and I didn't pay taxes on it when I deposited it. So I pay the taxes on it at the end of the year. So just keep that in mind as well because you don't want to, you know, convert to thousands of dollars and then have to pay thousands of dollars in taxes at the end of the year if you don't have it. So just you want to balance that as well. So other than that, um, if you made it through this, uh, thank you for watching. I hope uh, this gives you some ideas and, you know, maybe if you want to try it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or questions, you know, feel free to leave comments. And if you're a subscriber to my channel, I know it's been a while since I've made a normal video. It's been a couple months. I've been going, uh, been pretty busy with a merger, a major merger at work, so I haven't really had any time to uh, make any videos. But um, within the next month or so, I should uh, be getting back to being able to make them at least weekly again. And I will, as always, continue to respond to any messages, comments, and email in the meantime. So, again, I hope this was informative for you, and I will see you guys in the next video.